To God be the glory. Blessed be the wonderful name of Jesus. Good evening. I am Overseer Pastor Christine L. Carroll, bringing you prayer studies on behalf of Well Women International Ministries. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And as you have promised, out of my mouth and my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. We're just going to step right into our prayer studies for tonight. What to do when you feel like giving up. Or when you feel like you're living between a rock and a hard place. Hallelujah. And we're going to read Psalm 13 out of Modern English versions. And all the scriptures tonight will be from the Modern English version. And we're, I'm going to read a Psalm of David. Psalm 13, 1 through 6. How long, O Lord, will you forget me for good? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I harbor cares in my soul or sorrow in my heart by day? How long will my enemy loom over me? Take note and answer me. O oh Lord, my God, brighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have him. Lest my foes exalt when I stumble. For I, for my part, confide in your kindness. May my heart exalt in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord. Because he has dealt bountifully with me. In Psalms 42 9, I will say to God, my rock, why have you forsaken me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Hallelujah. And that was David uh, for the music director. This is a song of David. Both Psalms come from David. We know David did have his share of troubles and trials, but he looked to the Lord. And that's our first answer, that we should look to the hills of cometh our help, our help cometh from a righteous king, Lord God Almighty. And we should not be in despair, but if we find ourselves we have to turn up the volume on our prayer and a volume of our praise. Number one, when we begin to feel like giving up or abandoned by our Heavenly Father, we must be honest with God about our feelings. Going to Him in prayer is the first step towards victory. Hallelujah. This is important to pray specific prayers for them to be effective. In order for our prayers to be effective, we must pray, not vague prayers, but specific prayers, because we want specific answer. We don't want vague impressions, but we want specific answers. In Psalms 13, the phrase, how long occurs four times. And the first two verses indicating the depth of David's distress. David expressed to God and found strength. Hallelujah. But by the end of his prayer, he was able to express hope and trust in God. See, as we're praying, God is building up our strength. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is igniting us. Through prayer, we can express our feelings and talk our problems out with God. He helps us regain the right perspective 
and gives us peace. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 19, and this is a modern English version. It's a hymn of faith. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Though the fig tree does not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, though the yield of the olive fails and the fields produce no food, Though the flocks are cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. The God that is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk on high places. To the music director with my string instruments. So that was Habakkuk. He was given praise. And we read the whole book of Habakkuk. Which is in a, but three chapters. We will see why Habakkuk came to this trust. And this faith that got united. Because he was honest with the Lord. He in the first two chapters, he spilled out everything that was oppressing him and distressing him about the way he saw evildoers not be punished. So we can't keep our focus on that. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord. However, we don't actually know how many times David prayed the type of prayers that he prayed. But we know that he prayed many prayers because they're recorded in the Bible. The enemy was always attacking David. He was oppressed by the enemy. Many times in life, the oppression of the enemy can become so deep-rooted. David frequently claimed that God was slow to act on his behalf. And we can and often have these feelings, the same impatience, feeling that we are between a rock and a hard place with no way out. Often it seems like evil and suffering go unchecked and we wonder when God is going to stop the hurt, the heartaches, and the pain. Like David, we must give up. We must not give up or give in, but continue to pray and continue to trust God no matter how long it takes for God to give us justice. We have to trust the timing of the Lord. So use David as an example when you feel impatient and look to the word of God for encouragement. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait Upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Sometimes it is good to have prayer partners. We can pray. Who can pray with us over the problem and help us to put things into perspective. Also, don't rule out professional Christian counselors or your pastor. Hallelujah. Proverbs 24 and 6, for by wise counsel will you wage your war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. It comes a time sometime when we get just so overburdened that we feel that our prayers are not being answered. We need somebody to be in agreement for the answer to the prayer, not the agreement to what we want to hear. Because sometimes what we want to hear and the solution to the problem is not always the real answer from the Lord. We need confirmation to what we feel the answer is. Sometimes it's good to have 
prayer partners. I already said that. Another example is Job when he was smitten by the enemy. You remember the story of Job, how the devil came up before the Lord and asked, could he touch Job? And the Lord gave him permission, but he told him he couldn't kill him. Short version of the story. So, even though he was between a rock and a hard place, he trusted God to be his rock. He said, all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change comes. The Lord God gives and the Lord God takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, Job realized that God was Jehovah Rapha, God his healing. Jehovah Jireh, God his provider, and many other names of God that he used in blessing the name of the Lord. Job learned that no weapon formed against him will prosper, and every person coming to him talking anything against the plan that God had for him, he would condemn. He learned that even though the weapon did hit him. He had God's promise it would not prosper. So we have to realize that sometimes we have these weapons to hit us. Just like I, I was telling somebody on um, Saturday that the devil was God's bulldog. What do you do when a bulldog chases after you? You run to safety or get to safety. And sometimes we get a little eased in our supplication, our prayer, our gratitude, and our thankfulness. And the Lord releases the enemy to bring us back to him. Hallelujah. Real trust does not give up. Even if you're having these trials and these tribulations, you're not going to give up because you trust in God. Who is the author and your faith, finisher of your faith, Jesus Christ? We may feel, you may feel like you are between a rock and a hard place, but trust in the Lord your God. Believe he is the rock between you and your hard place. Into each life, some rain is going to fall. Strife, sorrow, and misery. James 1, 2 through 4, faith and wisdom, says, My brothers, count it all joy, and that means sisters too, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith develops patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God has not promised each day to be brighter, but he promised never to leave nor forsake us. And remember, trouble don't last always. You see, when we look to the hills of coming by help, we're encouraged when we open up the word of God and see his many promises through the Old and the New Testament. When we look at the examples of the men and women in the word of God, we are reassured that God does not lie. It's impossible for him to lie. He honors his word above his name. The word that goes forth out of his mouth does not return void, but it goes forth to accomplish that which he has purposed. So we must continue to pray, continue to push, and that's an acronym, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. We cannot give up. We cannot be discouraged, saints. We have to continue to hold to God's unchanging hand, grab on to the horns of the altar, and push 
evil out of its place. Hallelujah. Decree and decre declare the blessings of the Lord. Stand on his promises. Stand on his word. Plead the blood of Jesus. Psalms 4, 6, and 1. For the music director, a psalm of the sons of Korah, according to Amalek, Amalek, a song. God is our refuge and our strength, a very proven help in trouble. Psalm 61, 2. This is the for the music director with string instruments, a psalm of David. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you when my heart thanks. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So if you feel like you got, you're between a rock and a hard place, you can pull out this scripture. And say, lead me to the heart, a uh, rock that is higher than I. When my heart faints, and there are going to be some times when we feel so oppressed or depressed by the enemy that we don't see a way out and we feel like we want to give up. But we have to stand up, shut up, and look up. Hallelujah. Never give up. God's absolute sovereignty is one reason to never give up. We have to know who God the Father is and what his purposes was for sending Jesus Christ to pay the ultimate sacrifice for us. And we have to believe that because these miracles follow signs and wonders follow believers. We will cast out devils if we drink daily poison, just paraphrasing. No harm is going to come to us because we're trusting in the Lord. God changed situations that have been problems for years. So we have to wait for the fullness of time for our prayers to be answered and for situations to turn. Like the leper and the demon-possessed man. They were not healed immediately. Also the diseased woman who was considered unclean. For 12 years she too had been one of the untouchables. And had not been able to live a normal life. But Jesus restored her. Sometimes we are tempted to give up on people or situations that have not changed for years. But remember the scripture that tells they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. As we are waiting for the answer, for the condition to change, for our minds to be renewed, for our hearts to feel like it's not failing us, we have to trust God. God can change what seems unchangeable, giving new purpose and hope. That's if we are willing to wait patiently on him. Colossians 1.27 To them God would make known what is the glorious riches of this mystery, mystery among the nations. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. This is another one of my favorite scriptures, that latter part. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ lives in us. If we have received him as our Lord and Savior, if we have confessed our sins, taken on his name by baptism, Rising, leaving that old man in that water, walking in the newness of life. Hallelujah. He promised that he would come and live with us, even though 
he's seated at the right hand of the Father, then we become heirs of salvation. We are seated also in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us washed and whole that we may become the righteousness of God. So if you're listening to this broadcast tonight, and you have not received Christ as your personal sir, Savior and know him in the pardon of your sins. I urge you to do so. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone that we look to the hills of come if I help. I help coming from the Lord God. Put your trust in him, not in man, not in money, not in princesses, not in houses, not in land, not in cars, not in clothes, not in makeup. Not in dieting. None of these things, hallelujah, are going to make you be able to see the face of God in peace. So we need not to give up. Giving us causes us to miss the best that God has to offer. And giving up also puts us in a sinful nature. If we have received Christ and we go back, the Bible says that we're not fit for the kingdom and that it's like a dog returning to their vomit. But we are going to press on. Yes, it's easy to quit. We all have faced problems in our health, in our relationships, and or at work that have caused us to want to think about laying down the tools and walking away. Rather than giving up when persecution wore him down. The Apostle Paul concentrated on experiencing the inner strength from the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3.16, that he would give you, according to the riches of his glory, power to be strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. Don't let fatigue, pain, or criticism Force you off the job. Force you off your work natural job or force you off the job that you're working for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because whatever is right, he's going to pay you. And you cannot be looking for instant. If he wants to hear you instantly and answer you instantly, he will. If he wants you to wait on him, then you should patiently wait, hallelujah, to patience will have its perfect weight work in you. Renew your commitment to serving Christ. Don't forsake your eternal reward because of the intensity of today's life challenges. And we know there are many challenges now in today's life. Your very weakness allows the resurrection power of Jesus to strengthen you moment by moment. Hallelujah. So we can trust and believe and hope in the Lord. Practice God's word and practice his presence. Practicing his presence is meeting with him in his word, meeting with him in prayer, meeting with him through meditation. Not somebody else's meditation or meditations that come on the internet or whatever. But meditating between you and God. You don't need a sample of meditation. You don't need a sample of how your thoughts are supposed to run when it comes to God. This is a personal thing. And you should not be looking to other people's meditations or their topics of meditation. But you should be looking to the hills of come up your help. You have 66 books of things to meditate on. Which is God's word and his promises. It is because of these constitutions. That we can be sure that God will hear our prayers. Help us not to give up. And keep us from feeling like we're between a rock and a hard place. Number one, we know his name, the name above every name. When we call on Jesus, all things are possible. 
And there's a song that we have sang that Jesus is the answer for the world today. That's why God the Father sent his only begotten son. Hallelujah. And then whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Proverbs eighteen ten. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. And you might say, oh, she using bad language, bad English. It's not are safe. The righteous run into it and are safe because Jesus is one. He's not a plural. When you're saying are, you're saying but the Bible says the righteous run into it and is safe. That's the King James Version. There is only one protector in any, sit in any situation. And that is God's representative, Jesus. That's why you run into him and you are safe. There's also a song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The name above every name is power in the name, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Number two. We are covered in his blood, and when the devil tries to destroy us, the blood on us shines like a neon sign, like a laser beam that backs him up off of us. If you can remember as a child, or recently they made it over and called it the Wiz, the old story of the original Wizard of Oz, when the wicked witch tried to take the ruby red slippers off of Dorothy's feet. She got electrical shots that were very strong, but they backed her up off of Dorothy. Hallelujah. Exodus the chap chapter 12 in the Bible. The children of Israel were instructed to kill the Passover lamb, which is a type of Christ. And to strike the blood on the doorposts of their houses. So when the deaf angel would not so the deaf angel would not destroy them or anyone in their household. That's where the song originated. When I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Number three. We have his word, Jeremiah twenty three twenty six. Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. So when you feel like you are between a rock and a hard place, you pray to God and repeat his word and his promises to those that rock will be destroyed. Psalms 119, 105. My word is a lamp to my feet. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So when we have this darkness that comes over us, when we want to give up, or when we feel that we are between a rock and a hard place and we don't see no hope, or no trust. Our trust has gotten weak. Hallelujah. But God Almighty sends his word to heal us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we get in his word, it will light up that pathway of darkness that's standing between him and our faith in him. In the word of God, we have a hiding place. That was a song that originated from Jonah. Throw me overboard. I have a hiding place, but he was thrown into the belly of the fish. But God had a purpose and a plan for that. Another song is Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. 
Let me hide myself in thee. Another one is, On Christ the solid rock I stand, All other ground is sinking sand. So if you feel like you between a rock and a hard place, let that be rock. That rock be the rock of Jesus. Hallelujah. That God is a consuming fire. Yes, he is. And his word is like the fire. It's like a hammer that shadows the rock to pieces. Hallelujah. God puts no limitations on our faith. And they put no limitations on God. So if you are living between a rock and a hard place, and you are feeling that you want to give up, let the rock be Christ Jesus. I cannot emphasize that enough that you look to the hills. He is our shepherd. He's our present help in the time of need. Pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's another song. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. It's sinking sand. It is on Jesus Christ the Son. 1 John 4 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And we must remember the scripture we read, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So if Christ be in us, he's greater than any feelings of giving up. He's greater than feeling like you between a rock and a hard place. He is greater. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the wonderful things that he has done. And when we start to feel this way, we need to reach back and remember the goodness and the mercy that he has done for us. Remember the miracles and the signs and the wonders that he has wrought for us, for our safety, for our protection, for our betterment, even for our families. Hallelujah. He never left us or forsake us. Even in our lowest point, he is still there waiting, knocking at the door. Open the door and let him come in. Number five. In 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, when David and his men came back to Ziglag and saw that the enemy had came into the camp and stole all their possessions, including the women and children. He felt like he was between a rock and a hard place because everyone had turned against him. David was very discouraged, but he did not give up. He looked at this setback as a setup for a comeback. I'm going to repeat that again. David looked at this setback as a setup for a comeback. And that's an, a good example for us to follow. When we got a set up. Or a set back from the enemy. We have to look at it. That God is getting ready to bless us. That God is getting ready to pour out a blessing. That we won't have room enough to receive. So we need to not wait till the battle is over, but begin to shout and praise his holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. Because it's a setup for a comeback. And you will go higher heights and deeper depths. He said, I will encourage myself in the Lord. That's what David said. When everybody turned against him, was whispering and saying and gossiping about him, he did not. That, that spirit of discouragement, he shook it off like 
like Peter shook off the Holy New Year, that serpent or that viper that had attached itself when he was down at the Isle of Malta. When the serpent attached itself to him, the viper, he shook that thing into the fire. So when you are discouraged or you feel like giving up or you feel like you're between a rock and a hard place, Tonight, I can tell you to shake it off into the fire of God. For David stood on a rock that does not give away and went into the enemy's camp and took back what was stolen. Hallelujah. He retrieved what he had lost. Hallelujah. And Joel has told us that God will restore the years that the canker worm and the lotus has eaten. Oh, glory to God. We trust him and don't doubt he's surely to bring us out. You will never enlarge your borders until you enlarge your thinking. Fasting and prayer will help change your vision of being defeated by the devil. Prayer changes you and moves you from waiting, wanting to give up and moves you back out of a rock and a hard place. It moves you out of it. Prayer and fasting changes your nature and builds your faith to press towards the mark of a higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It plants your feet on higher ground and establishes your goings. Isaiah 43.2 The Bible tells us, When you pass through waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor shall the flame kindle on you. Hallelujah. That means when you're going through the trials and the tribulations of life, and when things get so hard, know that God is with you, and he has promised, no matter how hot it gets, the flames get, that they will not kindle on you. Hallelujah. Look at the chat rap me, Shaq and Abednego. Somebody challenged me the other day to know what their names were before they were changed. And I had to admit, I didn't know them. I don't do that deep study about that particular topic. But we have the example. When they were cast thrown into the fiery furnace. And people, these are not no fairy tales. These things happened. And the power of the Holy Ghost, the angel of the Most High God, was with them in the fiery furnace. And when they were brought out, their hair was not singed, their clothes were not burned. They didn't even smell like fire. Hallelujah. So, we have to use those things as an example. We're not being thrown maybe into physical fire, but things in life get so burning, so hard. They burn our hearts. They uh, make us have high blood pressure. They make us have stress. They make us have stroke and heart attack. But if we lean on Jesus and we call on him, he is faithful. Hallelujah. To bring us out. You have pet rocks that you don't even know about or haven't even considered. Yeah, people have pet rocks and they're buying in the store and paying money for it. But the pet rocks that I'm talking about, they represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you feel like giving up or feel like the enemy has you between a rock and a hard place, start throwing your rocks. You have more than you know. You have the name of Jesus. You call on Jesus. He'll answer prayer. 
You have the word of God where you can mirror God's word back to him. Lord, you said that you would never leave me or forsake me. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou is a shelter for me. Pleading the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan gets upset when you start pleading the blood of Jesus because that is a mighty dangerous rock for him. And praying without ceasing is a rock. And you can pray in tongues or you can pray in English. But when you pray in tongues, you get more words than you know. Because you're praying to angels. Hallelujah. you praying. You might not understand, but God Almighty, the Father of heaven and earth, the lifter and restorer of our head. <laughs> Excuse me. Hallelujah. 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 So we thank the Lord. That we know what to do when we feel like giving up or when we feel like we're between a rock and a hard place. And we found out that we have to wait on the Lord. He can answer us immediately or sometimes he cho chooses us to wait to build our faith because we sometimes get weak. Or forgetful. So that's why we need to reminisce on and think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Somebody said, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, won't you pray with me? Oh, Father, we thank you and bless your holy name, Father. Oh, as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and praise and be thankful unto you and bless your name, Lord, we thank you for you taking us through this day, Father. Hallelujah. And brought us to this present time without any hurt, harm, and danger, Lord God. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your most gracious and all wise God. We come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you that you have set your love upon us, have sent Jesus to shed his blood for the remission of our sins, Father. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor as we repent, for we have come short of your glory. And thank you for your forgiveness. We call upon you knowing that you will Answer us in times of trouble. We confess that we have been in despair about the devastations that we hear about the things that are happening in the world today. It seems that there is no place, no peace anywhere. So we cry out to you, Lord, the Prince of Peace, the Son of Righteousness, who comes with healing in his wings. We will trust you with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we come to acknowledge you and you will direct our path. We trust and we believe in that with all our heart, our body, our soul, and our spirit. We will not live as those who have no hope. So we choose to trust in you, Father. Hallelujah. You are the God of our salvation. Therefore, we will not mourn because of the oppression of the enemy. So as the deer panted after the water, so our souls pant after you. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads. As we cry to you, you hear us out of your holy hill. And this we are truly thankful and praise you, Lord God. For you will sustain us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for how you lead us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Father, Lord God, those that we have on our prayer list, we hold them up to you. On our personal prayer list, we hold them up to you, Lord God, that we will not worry or fret, but we will trust 
that you will answer our prayers in the fullness of time. Lord God, we thank you that perfect love casts out all fear and that there is no fear in you. We will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea. We will fear no evil for you are with us. Your rod and staff comfort us, Father. For this, we're truly thankful. You have told us not to fear because for you will never leave us or forsake us and that there is, that is your promise to give us the kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For this, we are truly thankful. We are free from guilt of the past and free from the fear of the future. Glory be to the holy and righteous name of Jesus as we stand fast in the liberty wherewith he has set us free. Lord God, we thank you that you've set us free and we will not be conformed and entangled with the yoke of bondage. Hallelujah, Lord, because of your blood has washed and made us clean for the transforming power of the Holy Spirit that makes us new creations in you, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. For we are in Christ. Therefore, we are new creations, Lord. So we thank you. Surely we will be a light to those that do not know you in a partner of their sins. We ask that you will save them and give them peace beyond understanding. We thank you, Lord God, that your word promises to give good tidings to the meek, to bind up the brokenhearted, to claim liberty to the captives, and to open prison doors to them that are bound. We thank you, Jesus, that because of you, we are no longer a captive to sin and no longer a prisoner of darkness or despair, hallelujah, or stress or worry. Satan no longer has us in chains, hallelujah, for the chains are broken. We thank you for the miracle and resurrection of Jesus, hallelujah, who went to the cross died and rose that we can be free from the curse of the law. Help us to never be a stumbling block to those who are weak and help us to be strong examples to those that have received you as Lord and Savior. Help us to continue to live in righteousness and prove what is your good, acceptable, and perfect will for us, Father. That we will constantly obey your word, Lord God, and stand on righteousness and truth, Father. Hallelujah. Because you are the author and the prince of peace and not of confusion. Lord, we ask that you remember the sick and shut in, those sick with the disease of corona. COVID and that and all the companion diseases associated with COVID. Remember those that work on are working on cures. Give them the breakthrough and discovery that we need. Anoint them with wisdom, power, and might. We thank you for your healing power. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord God. You are the head of every principality and power. And Lord, whichever way you choose to heal, Lord God, through medicine.